equations okay so yeah uh, before that uh, we'll see what are the different types of uh, sources that are supported by informatica power center and then we will go with the source qualifier look up and join the transformations okay so uh, basically we can classify the different uh, sources that power center supports into these five types first one is a relational sources relational sources are nothing but the uh, different types of databases like oracle sql server uh, db2 sybase uh, netiza so uh, teradata so like this uh, different types of databases are called as relational sources and uh, second type is the erp sources enterprise relationship uh, package or something like that erp sources they are uh, sap people soft jd edwards <laughs> and the third is the uh, file sources file sources are nothing but the flat files or xml files flat files in the sense text files okay dot txt files and uh, some of the legacy sources like uh, mainframes cobol files and some as400 files something like that and some other uh, sources are like web file, web log files oracle applications excel files microsoft excel files and something like that uh, literally you know uh, informatica power center can connect to uh, any type of source and extract the data from them okay now getting into source qualifier transformation a source qualifier is of type active transformation means that it can change the uh, number of output rows when compared with the input rows now source qualifier transformation can be used you know to read the data from relational and flat file sources relational in the sense of the databases and flat files for means the text files okay now source qualifier transformation basically what happens in the source qualifier transformation is like uh, whenever we uh, we uh, drag and drop the source definition into the mapping designer the source will automatically comes with a source qualifier transformation okay so whenever we uh, forward the uh, ports which present in source qualifier transformation to the next transformation in the mapping designer then the source qualifier transformation will by default generates a query okay so that query will tell us how it extracts the data from the source i'll show you once we uh, start working with the source qualifier transformation i'll show you how this uh, default sql will be generated okay and again uh, the default sql will be generated only in case of a relational sources if it is a flat file if the source is a flat file then it will not generate a, uh, uh, the default sql but the source qualifier transformation also provides the facility to the user to change the default sql okay so changing that default sql with the user defined or uh, as per user requirements is called as sql override okay so this is one of the important question that you will be facing on source qualifier transformation in the interviews okay so they will ask you uh, what is an sql override an sql override is nothing but the process of uh, changing the default sql that is generated by the source qualifier transformation okay what is that process of yeah uh, i'll show you once i uh, style uh, once we start working with the source qualifier with an example then i'll show you what is that okay for the time being uh, just uh, you know understand the definition for the source qualifier override an sql override is nothing but it's a process of changing the default sql that is generated by the source qualifier transformation okay now if you see here this is the source qualifier transformation now i say uh, uh, source qualifier transformation supports homogeneous joins uh, okay let me tell you what is meant by homogeneous joins and what is meant by heterogeneous joins A homogeneous joins means the same types of sources. Say, for example, you are trying to join two tables which are present in the same data under the same schema. Okay. Now let us say ORCL is my database, and source is my schema. Now under the source schema. let us assume we have two tables called emp and dept department table and employee table now 
these two sources are called as homogeneous sources because they are present under the same schema and under the same database okay so for example there is other database called oracle oracle is different oracle is a okay. Uh, okay don't let me don't get confused o r c l 2 this is another database and you have another schema something like that uh, something some a b c d and say for example you have a table called x y z now since this emp table and department table are under the same schema and under the same database these two tables will be called as a homogeneous tables or homogeneous sources okay whereas the table xyz when compared with uh, in comparison with the department table or with the employee table this will be called as a heterogeneous sources because they are underlying in a two different databases and two different schemas okay so heterogeneous sources also doesn't need to always to be a database okay you can have a flat file source some abc.txt is your source file assume uh, till now uh, in our in all our examples we worked only with the database tables but in today's example i'll also show you how to work with a text file as a source okay so abc is a text file if you try to join this abc text file with a, the any table or anything like that then these are called as heterogeneous two different types of sources right so we call it as a heterogeneous sources okay so you got the difference between a homogeneous and a heterogeneous right good so a source qualifier transformation will support only homogeneous joins we'll see how it does so this is how the properties of a source qualifier transformation will look like if you see this under the properties tab of a source qualifier i have sql query so here sorry uh, in this sql uh, the under the value in this box actually the source qualifier transformation will generate a default sql but we can change that so the process of changing the default sql is called as a sql override we can also specify the user defined join join condition we, we can also specify the filter condition and we can also specify the number of sorted ports that we want okay uh, we can also select the distinct values while reading from the source so these are the different properties that are provided by the source qualifier now let's go back to the nurse let's go to the lookup transformation okay a lookup transformation is of type passive transformation until informatica 8.6 version and earlier versions okay from the 9.x version onwards from 9. Point, uh, just a second guys yeah uh, from 9.x or 9.1.0 version onwards the lookup transformation has become active transformation okay so uh, you can say uh, this lookup transformation is one of the differences if they ask you in interview like what is the difference between a 8.x version and 9.x version so this is one transformation you can mention there a transformation was a passive transformation in 8.6 and previous versions whereas from 9.x this has been made active transformation okay now lookup transformation uh, a lookup uh, the uh, lookup transformation is something like you know uh, say for example you have a uh, an employee table or something like that and you want to get some details which is present in a different table for each record present in your employee table then you will do the uh, lookup onto the different table which is present in the database or you can also do a lookup onto the flat file and you know pick the respective values from the table or from the flat file okay now lookup also supports a uh, user defined uh, sql query and that user defined sql query the process of uh, writing the user defined query is called as a lookup override and a lookup transformation supports again the homogeneous joins means the same the same type of sources 
and lookup transformation can be used in both connected and unconnected ways. In our and today's session, we'll see how to uh, use a lookup transformation as a connected source. And later point of time, uh, once I start discussing about the advanced concepts of uh, Informatica, I'll teach you how to uh, use the lookup transformation as a unconnected transformation. Okay. Now, uh, if you uh, remember, uh, for aggregator, while discussing the aggregator transformation, rank and uh, sorter transformation, I was discussing about cache memories. Now, lookup transformation is also one kind of transformation that makes use of cache concept. But uh, with, a, with a slight change, lookup transformation actually supports four different kinds of caches, cache concepts. The first one, we call it as a static cache. Second is a dynamic cache. Third is a persistence cache. And fourth is a shared cache. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what's the difference between uh, four of these uh, cache concepts while explaining the example. So next one would be a joiner transformation that we will be discussing. So joiner transformation is an active transformation. And joining transformation can join only two sources at a, at a, at a time. It can't uh, join more than two sources at once. Okay, and joiner transformation performs horizontal join. Horizontal join and vertical joins means, so for example, uh, I'll consider a table called EMP in that I have, say, employee number, employee name, and DEPT, department number. Now I'll consider one more table under the department number, say for example I have 10, with employee name as ABC, and department number as 100. Now, I say I will consider another table called department, department table, and in that department table I have department number and department description. Okay, for department number 100, I have description as manager managerial department uh, not it's not a department right so finance department okay now join when we use a joiner transformation for joining this employee table with the department table the joiner transformation performs horizontal join in the sense it will join this department number 100 with the department number 100 present in the department table and gives the result as employee number as 10, ABC, department number 100, and description, department description as finance. Okay. If, you, if you notice this, this particular row which is present in the employee table is horizontally connected or horizontally joined with the department table and a single row has been written. Right? So this kind of join is called as a horizontal join. There is another kind of join called vertical join. Okay. But for, to make the vertical join, there should be common records between uh, EMP table and common columns between EMP table and the department table. If I want to perform the same join between a EMP and department in a or in a vertical manner, then it would something look like 10, ABC, 100, and for the department field, I'll have null. For the second record, I'll have null for this, null, 100, and finance. You observe this? You recognize the difference between this uh, vertical join and a horizontal join? No, I didn't get it. Okay. Uh, are you people aware of a union uh, in case of SQL? Yeah, union. Yeah, a vertical join is nothing but the way of performing union. If you see, um, uh, let me consider employee number, e name, department, and uh, department description. 
if you perform a union for the first record it union union will take the first record and it will put it in the uh, it result set as 10 abc and department but there is no description available in this first record so i'll put the null for the second record which it is taking from the department table this record doesn't have a employee number so it will generate null employee it doesn't have employee name so it generates null again for department it has 100 Okay. And department description, the record has finance. So if you see, when I join this EMP table and a department table in a vertical manner, it is generating two different records, which is aligned in a vertical fashion. Okay. Okay. Whereas in case of a join, if we try to join the EMP with a department using a joiner, it is actually joining these two records into a single record. In a, in a horizontal fashion. Okay. So now we have both the type of transformations in Informatica. We have a joiner transformation, we have a union transformation. Whereas a joiner transformation performs horizontal joins, whereas a union transformation it performs vertical joins. Uh, as I said, the joiner transformation supports two types of uh, two only two sources at a point of time. The two sources we call it a, we call them as one source we call as a master source, and the other source we call it as a detail source. Okay. And joiner transformation supports four types of joins. The first one is a normal join. Second one is a master outer join. Third is a detail outer join, and fourth is a full outer join. When I say normal join, it gives the matched rows between a master source and the detail source. Only the matched rows between your master source and the detail source. If I say master outer join, it is like you can uh, you know you can remember it as master out detail in. Okay, that's a shortcut for remembering a master outer join. Master out detail in. It means that it gives only matched rows from the master source and all the matched and unmatched rows from the detail source. Okay. Okay. So detail outer join means you can remember this as a detail out and master in. Detail out and master in. It means that all the matched and unmatched rows from the master source and only matched rows from the detail source. Now, full outer join in the sense, it gives all the matched and unmatched rows from both the master and the detail source. Okay. Fine. So, the joiner transformation, I said that it divides the sources into two types, where a master source and a detail source. The joiner transformation stores the master data in index and data cache. First, it's, uh, first it reads the master data, master source and stores it in the index and data cache and then it will start read it will start reading the detail source record by record and compares with the content present in the index and data cache okay and join a transformation again it supports only two sources at a time and this is how a join a transformation will look like in a mapping designer if you see i have a source one source okay uh, we call these kind of uh, the employee file one and source employee file one these kind of things as a pipelines in a mapping designer in an ETL plan okay I'll say this first one as a first pipeline okay this as a second pipeline so pipeline is a terminology or a term which we use in a ETL mapping okay so first pipeline second pipeline are joined using joiner transformation So you see uh, the data, the employee ID, which is picked from the first pipeline into the joiner transformation, are defined as a master source. You notice this? You uh, could you uh, if you can uh, follow the arrow mark. Employee ID one has defined as a master. Yep. Okay. 
So the remaining ports, employee ID, employee name and city, which is coming from the pipeline 2, are defined as a detail source. Okay. Now, uh, when, so whenever we uh, join a transformation supports only equi joins. Okay. So if you see join condition here, employee ID 1 is equal to, we wrote the condition as employee ID 1 is equal to employee ID. It does not uh, support the joiner transformation, does not support non equi joins. Means that you can't say employee ID 1 greater than or equal to employee ID, less than or equal to employee ID. So those kind of non equi joins are not supported by your joiner transformation. It supports, it always supports only a equal join, equi joins. And you have also specified the join type here. If you see, master outer join. Okay. Fine. Now let's go with an example and show you how to work with each of these transformations. Then you'll get a clear idea on this. Okay. Uh, for source qualifier, uh, we don't need to. Uh, develop any new mapping again because we have for in each and every transform in each and every mapping uh, that we have developed we have a source qualifier okay so what I'll do is okay uh, I took the example of uh, m underscore sorter example now when when we develop this uh, we, we by default the source qualifier transformation will come in the ETL designer, uh, ETL mapping, right? So, let me open this source qualifier. Go to the properties tab. If you observe in the source qualifier transformation, I have SQL query, right? Let me go and see what is there in the SQL query. I'll open this. At this point of time, there is nothing nothing is showing here right so what I'll do is I connect the ODBC connection since my source is present in the source I select the ODBC data source as a source and I'll give the user and I'll give the password once I give them and click on generate SQL here the source qualifier transformation is actually generating the SQL here you observe this yeah Select EMP dot employee number, employee name, job, manager, hire date, salary, commission, department number from EMP. Okay. In, if my source is a relational table, okay, if my source is a relational table, only then the source qualifier transformation will generate this SQL. If my source is a flat file or a text file, then the source qualifier does not generate the SQL. At the same time, it will not uh, it, will, it will not even allow the user to write any SQLs here because we can't write an SQL on a text file, right? So, if you observe, uh, this has generated the source qualifier transformation has generated a default SQL, but at the same time, it is also allowing me to specify the condition or you know overwrite the default uh, SQL by adding a web class I'll say the DUPTNY is equal to 10 means that whatever uh, till this part whatever the SQL is generated by this a source qualifier is a default SQL but I am adding I am overwriting this default SQL by adding my my own business logic like a where class or you can even say an order by class, order by one, order by EMP and wo. So like this, the user can customize the default SQL. So that process of customizing the default SQL for the as per the user defined SQL is called as SQL override. Okay, now if I click on validate. No errors detected. Okay. 
Now let me also show you one thing here. Okay, before uh, let me remove these things. Now see, uh, I have this right. Now, but uh, now if I click on generate SQL mm -hmm. again, see the the whatever the uh, customization that I done has been removed and it has generated the default SQL. You observe that where class and order by class, it, it has removed everything. Yep. Okay. Now, just notice this. It is selecting the employee number, employee name, job, and all these details. Okay, just remember this. Now, what I'll do is, okay. Now, I'll simply remove this department number uh, connection and the commission connection. Okay, now I have only employee number, e name, job, manager hire date and salary okay for our convenience let me remove a few more uh, links okay if you see i have only three ports employee number employee name and job has been forwarded to the software transformation now i'll open the source qualifier i'll go to the sql query click on generate sql you see it has it, it wrote that the source qualifier uh, has written the query in such a way that it is picking only the employee number employee name and job it is not picking the remaining uh, columns from the source yep okay it means that source qualifier transformation will generate the sql based upon the ports mm -hmm. that we forward from source qualifier to the next transformation Okay, there it, it uh, so it is internally the source qualifier transformation is internally ensuring that it picks only the required ports and passes to the next transformation, so that the performance can be improved significantly. If you see this manager uh, hire date, these ports are not given to source sorter. So selecting the, or you know extracting the data, reading the data from the source for these columns is unnecessary. So the source qualifier transformation is internally ensuring that it it picks it or it reads the only the required ports from the source and passes it to the next transformation. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll connect these ports back again. Now if I try to generate the SQL, see it is picking all the ports. Whichever, which are all the forwarded to the next uh, transformation, all those ports are it is picking here. Okay. So that's how it works. So either I can even uh, override this SQL default SQL by adding my my own required uh, business logics like where class, order by class, or even I can write uh, functions in this. Okay. So that is called as SQL override. Now you can ask me how can we uh, perform joins? I said while explaining the PPT, I said the source qualifier will support homogeneous joins. Means that uh, it supports only uh, means it joins only the tables present under same schema and same database. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how to write how to write in uh, join here. I'll say select EMP and go e name job manager everything department number and here i'll simply overwrite the query saying dpt uh, first let me see if the table exists in my source or not Uh, one more thing. Uh huh. Um, hold on, just a minute. My voice is not clear. Just a minute. Now you can hear me clear. Oh yeah, tell me. Oh, so uh, I have Linux in my system, right? In my uh, computer. Uh huh. 
Uh-huh. And suppose if I install 1110G you, you gave me on Linux and uh, and Informatica on Linux, they will be they will be the same, right? No, uh, in Linux you can't uh, install whatever the Informatica software that I provided because uh, oh. it is in EXE format, right? Which cannot be yeah. executable under Linux. So you need to have uh, maybe some KSH or uh, some kind of script format. Okay, so create table DEPT as uh, select star from Scott dot DEPT table created. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, if you see, I have this uh, EMP table and uh, DEPT table under source schema in ORCL database. Now, observe how I write the query here. DEPT dot DNAME from EMP comma D E P T where EMP dot D E P T N O is equal to D E P T dot D E P T N O. But before I validate this query sorry I need to have the description field here. See this? Actually, I have uh, overrided the default query with a join query here. I'm trying to join the EMP table and the department table. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again, the both the tables are under the same schema called source and under the same database ORCL. Now, if I click on validate, query should return exactly eight fields to match fields projected from. Oh, okay. Just a second. Did you observe the errors? I created DNAME, but I did not project it to sorter. Okay, let me show you the error again. Not, uh, remember this, I have created the DNAME uh, port, but I did mm -hmm. not forwarded it to sorter transformation. So the default SQL will generate only or will pick only from EMP NVO to DEPT NVO. It will not pick DNAME. But in our uh, override query, I am trying to pick DNAME also. Mm -hmm. But this is since this DNAME is not forwarded to uh, sorter transformation, ideally this should not we should not write this here. So that is the reason when I click on validate, it is saying that query should return exactly eight fields to match fields projected from source qualifier from the source qualifier okay means that I am projecting only eight fields here one two three four five six seven eight fields from the source qualifier to the sort of transformation whereas in our SQL query I am selecting eight, nine fields employee number one ename two job three manager four five six seven eight and nine okay so to remove this error what I have to do is project dname also from source qualifier to sorter transformation now I have total nine rows projected from source qualifier to sorter at the same time my overwrite query is also picking nine rows sorry nine uh, columns now if I click on validate, query should return exactly eight fields. Why is this?
mp dot debt invo equal to invo valid SQL query should return exactly 8 fields that's in the source qualifier working yep. no issue okay. I'm not sure why this error is coming here mm. But see, uh, once I overwrite this and try to save, it's saying valid. Okay. I'll check why that uh, why that issue why that na uh, warning is coming. But for now, uh, just would like this is how we perform the uh, joins here. Okay, by overriding the uh, default SQL query. Okay. Okay. Might be we need to connect with the target definition, right? In the source definition? Yeah, in the target definition. Because we need to target. connect. Target, it's not required, I think. I guess we need to need change to, here yeah. in the source definition. Just a second. Okay. We'll change in the source definition and uh, EMP. In EMP, I'll create a new port called DNAME. Okay. I'll say DNAME, department name, marker 2. Okay, this is all fine. Apply OK. And once I say control S, you see this? In the mapping, it has not been automatically changed. DNAME. Okay. Now I'll connect this DNAME with the source qualifier. Now I have from the source definition and source qualifier, and from source qualifier to sorter, I have total nine ports. Now let me validate this. Okay, see this? No errors detected. Okay. So we need to uh, create this DNAME in the source definition yeah. also. Okay. But if I change this source definition, all my remaining mappings will go invalid. Because uh, in all the mappings I am using uh, same, right? So DNAME. Here I have DNAME and uh, I don't have this in the source qualifier, I don't have this. Let us see what happens. Okay, it is still valid. Okay. 
Coming back to the sorter transformation. Okay, so now, now you see, right? Uh, you observe, uh, you understand, right? How to perform join using a source qualifier transformation? It is by overwriting the default SQL. Okay, we can also specify this join condition or this uh, where class condition in the properties table also user defined join you know so here we can specify uh, department emp dot department number is equal to dept dot department number okay At the same time we can also specify the source filter source uh, source filter means in a sense filter condition like department number is equal to 10 or department number equal to 20 so like this we can also specify the filter conditions but uh, remember that we should not uh, say where we should not put this where uh, where class while defining the filter condition at the source filter level in the source filter uh, properties tab okay so don't put this where class we can you have to just specify like department number equal to 20 or whatever the filter condition okay now here number of sorted ports number of sorted ports in the sense either we can specify the order by class order by employee number like this in the SQL override or we can also specify the number of ports that we want sorted here if I say one the data will be sorted by the they will be sorted on first uh, the first column okay if I say two the data will be the source data will be sorted based on the f first and second columns like this we can also specify uh, on how many number of columns we want the data to be sorted okay. now uh, you see this pre SQL and post SQL pre-SQL in the sense before reading the data from the database into the informatica level if we want any of the queries to be executed at the database level then we can specify that in the pre-SQL part okay so uh, generally what happens in a real-time scenario is like uh, say for example you are trying to read from a source table which is of very huge size okay you have some 10 or 20 million records in your source and you want to read the data from that source into your informatica for processing okay so there is a concept in a, a database that if you can create an index if you can create indexes on your source table then reading of the data will be very faster okay now since you have a huge number of uh, records in your source it is always better to have an index so what we can do is in the pre SQL part we can simply say create index index name on the source table okay. so we can write a query in the pre SQL uh, area saying that create index on index index name on your source table so this query since it is a previous SQL query first this query will be executed in a sense the index will be created on the source table and then the reading of the data will start okay it, so thereby it increases the performance it increases the uh, uh, the performance of reading the data but at the database level there is also another concept like if you have an index on a table and if you are trying to load the data into that table then the data loading process will be delayed because it has index okay. so whenever you try to load or write some or insert some data into a table which has an index the performance will be less because first it has to create the index and then it has to insert the record 
it means that the data loading process will be slow if you have an index. So what we do is in the post uh, in the pre SQL part we have created the index. We have we read the data from the source, and in the post SQL part we'll simply say drop index index name. So the index will be created on the source only for a shorter duration, only for only while only until we read the data from the source, and then it will uh, the index will be drawn and it will be set back to the same uh, same uh, position or same uh, settings. The source table will be set to the same settings. You understood, right? What is the purpose of this pre SQL and post SQL? Uh, can you repeat again? Yeah. Okay. At the database level, actually, we have two concepts. One is, if whenever you are trying to read a data, whenever you are trying to read the data from a source, it it is always good to have an index, because indexing a source or indexing a table will improve the uh, data reading faster. Okay. If a source or if a table is indexed, then you can read the data at a faster rate. But if you have a data, uh, sorry, if you have an index on a table, then the data loading process will be slow. Let me put it this way. Say, for example, uh, I have uh, an ETL plan or ETL mapping one. This ETL mapping one is actually loading the data into a table called employee. <laughs> Means that here ETL mapping one is loading the data into the table called employee. Okay, and then from the employee table, my ETL mapping two is reading the data. Okay, observe ETL mapping one is loading the data into the employee table, and ETL mapping two is actually reading the data from the employee table. Now, if I create an index and leave it as it is on the employee employee table, then the performance of the uh, ETL mapping one will be less because while loading the data into the employee table, first it has to create the index, and then it has to load the data into the employee table. So the ETL mapping one will perform very less whereas the employee table has the index my ETL mapping 2 will be faster means that creating an index on the employee table is impacting the ETL mapping 1 okay so to avoid this situation what I will do is in the ETL mapping 2 I will say before reading before reading create the index before reading create the index on the employee and immediately after reading drop the index on employee means that before reading I will create the index so that my ETL mapping 2 will be faster and immediately after reading the data i will create i will drop the index so that employee, uh, the etl mapping one will also be faster so nothing uh, no mapping is getting impacted here so you are saying you are saying create index before reading and after reading drop the index exactly so before reading in the sense pre sql mm. in the pre sql part i have defined create index uh, create index query Mm -hmm. And once the data is read, uh, read, once the data reading is done in the post SQL, I'll say drop the index. Okay. Okay. So this is the purpose of pre SQL and post SQL. It is not only index. In real time scenarios, you might uh, come. Uh, you no, know, you might you might face a different kind of scenario as well. So it's not always an index related. Okay. So before reading the data, uh -huh. 
We have to have defined all the time three SQL and four SQL, right? For past not required. This is not a mandatory thing. In fact, this is not oh. mandatory. Okay. So even I can re simply remove them. It is not mandatory. Okay. Only if your uh, business uh, logic in a real time scenario uh, forces you to have this pre SQL and post SQL or this kind of uh, any uh, logic you want to develop. You can uh, write the PSQ, pre SQL and post SQL here. Okay. Good. So uh, we wrote the sorry, we saw the SQL uh, uh, source qualifier transformation on relational table. Now let us see how the source qualifier transformation will behave if my source is a flat file okay but before that i need to tell you how to create a flat file source till now we worked on uh, till now we worked we considered source as a relational table emp now let us see how to create a flat file source again there are two ways you can create a flat file source in the source analyzer go to the sources click on create give some name here flat flat file and select the database type in the database type you see flat file here file so flat file click on create click on done okay now this flat file this particular source definition is of type flat file and immediately in the under the sources if you observe there is another uh, option or uh, another uh, another thing has been created apart from sources it is flat file and under that all the flat file type sources are stored okay now flat files or or a text file can be of two types one is a delimited flat file and fixed width flat file delimited flat file d e l i m i t e d delimited flat file or delimited flat uh, text file a delimited flat, uh, text file in the sense the columns the columns present in a delimited flat file are somewhere are separated by some delimiter maybe the delimiter can be comma or a pipeline okay or uh, you can have any delimiter at the right symbol or a hash like that okay for example let us uh, uh, assume the delimiter as comma so like this i have employee number e name salary and tpt and now under the employee number i have 100 separated by comma and there is a name abc and then salary and department number now 200 xyz 2000 and 20 now if you observe the data in my delimited flat file are separated by a comma comma separator or a delimited by a comma okay you understood right this yeah okay now there is another type of flat file called fixed width flat file now let me save this and show you how the fixed width flat file will look like fixed width flat file now you see uh, i'll say emp envo and i'll leave this and e name cell okay now you see uh, hello uh, but, uh, is some noise around okay 
no it's fine okay now observe this uh, in the fixed width uh, flat file or the fixed width uh, text file the length of emp and wo field is fixed okay and from e name it is fixed again there is no separator here now the data will also look something like this employee number 10 and there won't be any characters here and for it will start again at the employee name abc and there will be a fixed width and salary and department number as 10 if you notice so from e to this uh, this part there is a fixed width the width is fixed for this particular uh, column okay since the fig, uh, width for this employee number field is fixed whatever the data that will be present under that field cannot exceed that uh, limit maybe a 10 characters or a 20 characters it can't exceed more than that okay similarly notice this e name i have a fixed number of characters 1 2 3 4 5 and maybe some spaces up to 10 characters so whatever the data that uh, that will be present under that column should not exceed more than that number of characters okay now these are the two types of uh, flat files one is a fixed width flat file and the other is a delimited flat file in case of a delimited flat file i have some separator field separator okay now let me go to the source definition part now i have created the flat file now i can uh, actually change what type of i can have, i can i should define what type of a file it is it is a flat file but i, I should also specify whether it is a delimited or whether it is a fixed width flat file okay you notice this part flat file information now I'll select the delimited click on advanced i can actually specify what is the delimited that is being used in the source file whether now by default it would be comma if you want to change it you can change this remove comma and place a pipeline symbol okay so like this you can change it I'll leave it to comma here and click on OK. Now, if it is a fixed width flat file, if a source that is coming to you uh, is a fixed width, then select the fixed width here, click on advanced. You see how the null characters should be identified with a star. Okay. Go to the delimited click on advanced and if you see in the bottom of this there is a property like number of initial rows to skip it means that if you open this delimited flat file that we just uh, defined the first first row present in this uh, flat file is a header right so we should not load this header into the target correct means that the data reading from the source file has to happen from the second row onwards so in order to have that we should we should skip this first record and then start reading from the second record so okay um, property okay, sir? yeah first of all uh, i'm not clear with the concept of delimited okay uh, the delimited as the name itself suggests uh, the columns uh, or the fields present in the source file are mm -hmm. separated delimited by some uh, operator either it could oh, be a okay. comma or a pipeline okay. something like that mm. okay so whenever you are creating a source definition mm. okay so i created the flat file uh, source definition as a flat file Mm. So we need to specify what type of a file it is. Is it a delimited? If it is mm. a delimited, specify what is the delimiter that is being used in the source. Okay, okay. I got it. Okay, it is a comma. Yeah, mm. comma. 
and from which row the data reading has to happen okay if you see number of initial rows to skip okay i'll set it to 1 because in my source file the first record is a header so i don't want to read this and load it into the target that is uh, that is an uh, error right yeah because the actual data is present from the second row onwards so in the source definition i have to specify how many rows should be skipped initial rows should be skipped those are one okay click on okay apply and okay now this is one way of creating now you have created only the definition now go to the columns tab and create the ports okay so this is one way of creating the so of source definition a text file source definition flat file source definition okay the other way of creating a uh, source definition is go to the sources you see the option here import from file okay so click on import from file now it will uh, it will give you a browser browser kind of thing so i have created the file in the desktop so i'll go to the desktop by default the informatica power center designer will try to search for dot dat file dat file okay whereas we created dot txt file so i'll set it as all files and i see the delimited underscore flat file okay so for the delimited flat file i'll select this click on okay see the data is appearing here yeah but i want the data to be imported from the second line so i'll say start import at row 2 or i'll set this to 1 and here i have a checkbox called okay you see this there is a two types uh, two uh, options yeah, yeah. what type of a source it is is it a delimited source or it a fixed, uh, fixed width source since my source is a delimited uh, source, I'll select the delimited and I'll say import field names from first line. Now, the moment I say import field names from first line, the start import at row has been changed to 2. If I remove this, it will be 1. From the first row, it will start importing the data. But first row is a field names. So I'll select import field names from the first line click on next okay now the delimiter is a comma so it is automatically selected to comma if i want to change this i'll say tab or what is the whatever uh, the field uh, for the delimiter that is present in the source uh, i can specify that here but in our case it is comma so i'll select the comma delimiter click on next now see this it has imported the field names from the first line so it is saying the first field is employee number okay employee number and you can set the data types employee number is a numeric so i'll set the numeric i'll give the precision length as uh, 5 and scale as Similarly, we can set now I'll set the data type for the ename ename as text and salary as numeric again and department number also numeric. Click on finish. You see the data the source definition has been imported imported from the flat file is it clear now yeah the two ways of creating the source definition the flat file source definition one is directly creating in the source uh, analyzer by going to source and click on create and the second way is to import it from the using the import from file option okay 
similarly let us let me also show you how to import a fixed bit flag file so import some file i'll go to the desktop i'll select all files here and i'll pick fixed bit flag file click on okay oh, fine there is some issue with the file here I'll say employee number. I'll give one, two, three, four, five, and e name, salary, department number, employee number ten, e name ABC, salary thousand, and department number ten. Similarly. Okay, now in the source analyzer, if I try to import some file in the desktop, I'll select a fixed bit flat file, click on OK. Now, again, it is giving me two options. What is the type of source? Is it a delimited or a fixed bit? So since my source is a fixed width, I'll select fixed width file, and I'll select, I'll I'll inform uh, I'll inform this wizard to pick the field names from the first line. So I'll say import field names from first line. Click on next. Now, if you see, we can actually specify the delimiters here. If I click on this path. I clicked here in the, just before the ABC. Now this has been divided into one field. Now I'll click somewhere here. It will put a mark over there. And from ABC to till this arrow mark or till this line, it will split it into another uh, field, second field. Or if I want to remove this. If I want to remove this, sim simply double click this. That will be removed. So I want to say from A B from A from the character A to till this part is my second field. Similarly, from one to till this part, my third field. Now I'll click on next. And it will by default set the data types, but you can also change the data types if you want. Employee number and select employee number and say numeric and e name we can change the data types if you want click on finish it has created a fixed width flat file okay so these are the two ways of creating your source file flat file uh, definition okay now let us go to the mapping designer Go to mappings and click on create. I'll say m underscore flat file. Click on OK. Now I'll try to I'll try to pull this fixed bit, uh, the delimited flat file into my mapping designer. The moment I pull the uh, source definition into my mapping designer I have a source definition created sorry the source qualifier automatically created for the source now I'll say I'll pick this target EMP and put it here and I'll collect connect this employee number e name employee number to employee number 
Enum to Enum. Salary to salary. And department member to department number. Okay. Now, if you observe, I have projected the four rows from source qualifier to the target definition. Now, let us see what are the properties that will be enabled and what properties will be disabled in the source qualifier. Because now my source is a flat file, it's not a relational table. Okay. Now, go to the source qualifier and go to the properties tab. You see the source qualifier. This property has been disabled. <coughs> it is in blue color. It is a disabled format. User defined join is disabled. Source filter is disabled. Number of sorted ports is disabled. Okay. So this is disabled means we can't write a query here. This is completely disabled here. Whatever I type, it will not be written. So means that if my source is a flat file, we cannot write user defined SQLs in the source qualifier. It means that it will not support SQL override if my source is a flat file. You got the difference, right? How the source qualifier will behave if my source is a relational table and how the source qualifier will behave if my source is a flat file. Did you get the difference? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, but um, uh -huh. so can, can you can you like, repeat this again? Yeah, definitely. Like just just again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take this filter example. Okay. In the filter, in the filter mapping, the source is a relational table. So if you observe the source qualifier, if you open the source qualifier and go to the properties tab. You see the source qualifier, SQL query, user defined join, all these are enabled. Okay. Means that the source qualifier transformation is allowing the user to write a query, a user defined query. Okay. So it is yeah. uh, it is allowing for SQL override concept. Whereas if you select the if your source is a flat file. I'll, I'll show the flat file uh, mapping now. If you here, it is the flat. The source is a flat file. Means mm -hmm. the source qualifier transformation. Go to the properties tab. You see all these properties are disabled. So it means that this, if your source is a flat file, the source qualifier does does not support SQL override concept. And also, okay. you cannot join anything. You can, since you can't write an okay. SQL. You can't join. You can't write a join uh, statement in flat so, file. Yeah, in a flat file. Okay. But let us assume a scenario. I have two pipelines, uh, just like this. Uh, say this is how my business logic should look like. I have. In the first pipeline, I have a source qualifier, uh, sorry, a relational source, and in the second pipeline, I have a flat file. Okay. Then how will you join these two pipelines? The only option left to us is to use a join a transformation. Okay. If, if in case my uh, first pipe in the pipeline one is uh, uh, the source is a relational table. And my pipeline two also has the relational table, and both the tables are lying under the same schema. Then I can simply use a single source qualifier and write a join condition over there. I don't need to go for the join a transformation. But in this case, since both the sources or one of the sources are flat files, or it's a heterogeneous sources, means the two different types of sources, we need to use a join a transformation to join the sources okay so uh, we saw how this source qualifier will work now let us go to lookup transformation okay 
uh, as I said, the lookup transformation, the aim of this lookup transformation is to uh, pick the related values by looking at some other table or a flat file or uh, a view or a synonym. Okay. Now, say for example, I have a I have two tables. I have a table called employee. Okay, let me show in this. Okay, now if you see in the EMP table, I have a department number. Okay, but my department description. My department description D name is present in a different table. Okay. Now my requirement is something like I want to know the department name for each of the records present in my EMP table. Okay. So one way you can do it is join both this EMP table and department table by using the department number field and then pick the department name. That is one way of doing. The other way of doing is <coughs> using a lookup transformation. What I'll do is I'll take a lookup transformation. I'll pass the uh, data that is coming from employee table to the lookup transformation. And in the lookup transformation, I will do a lookup on department table. Okay. And then in the lookup transformation, I will specify the condition like match department number of the employee with the department number of the department table. So let us take an example and do it. For this first I need to have a target definition created. Underscore. LKP. I'll give a short name as LKP. And I'll create this table in uh, target. Target generator execute SQL generator execute. I want this table in the target. Done. Okay. Now I'll go to the mapping designer and uh, click on create m underscore lookup example okay, I'll select the employee table and I'll select the EMP score lookup now okay if you observe I have department number that is coming from the EMP table, okay, but I want the department name in my target, okay, along with the department number. But my department name is present in a different table called DEPT, okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll select a lookup transformation. This is the shortcut for lookup transformation. And when the mo when I try to create a lookup, when I try to create the lookup transformation in my mapping designer, it will basically ask me, like, in, on which, where the tail, what is the lookup source? Means that, in our case, the lookup source is the department table. 
I want to do a lookup into the department table and then pick some of the values present in this uh, department table and join it with the employee table. So my lookup when I, the moment I try to create the lookup transformation, it will ask me what is the source and where the source is existing. The source can exist in either source database or it can be present in a target database. Okay. Now see this import. I can import the source either using a relational. Uh, it can, my source could be either a relational or even a flat file. So I'll say import the lookup source from using a relational table. The moment I select it, it will ask me to choose the ODBC connection. Means that my source for this lookup transformation can exist either in a source source side or it can even exist in the target side. Okay. In my case, the source is present in the lookup source or the source table for the lookup transformation is present in source database. So I'll give source and give the credentials for source ODBC connection. Click on connect will show all the tables. Now for the lookup transformation I want the source table as I want the source table as department. So I'll select the department and click on OK. The lookup transformation if you see it has it picked the column names, department number, department name and location from the department table. Okay, now what I want is for all the department numbers, for all the department numbers that is present in my source table called EMP, I want to pick department name from the department table. So how what I will do here is I will pass the department number port that is coming from EMP source to the lookup transformation. You see this? the department number of source qualifier EMP is now connected to the lookup transformation department number one. Okay. Now in the lookup transformation, I'll open the lookup transformation. I'll go to the conditions tab. I'll create a new condition. In the new condition, I'll say you see the lookup table column. Lookup table column department number. I wanted to equal make uh, equal to department number one. This is the transformation port. See port tab. Department number, department name, and location are lookup table ports. Whereas the department number is coming from the transformation. That is source qualifier transformation port. So in the condition tab, I'll match them like lookup table column department number with the transformation port department number. I'll apply this condition and click on OK. It means that department number one that is coming from the source qualifier, I am equating it with the department number which is present in the, which is coming from the lookup source. And from the lookup transformation, I'll pick this department name. I'll, you see this is an output, uh, output port, department name. I'll pick this department name and connect it to the target called department name. So now what happens is the lookup transformation it will start reading the records, record by record from the source. It will compare this department number that is coming from the uh, source with the department number present in the lookup source. Lookup source is nothing but our department table. So the lookup transformation 
reads line by line line by line from the emp source and compares it with the department table department number and it will return the department name from the lookup source to the next transformation okay and the remaining ports i'll simply connect it from my source qualifier and the department number you understand this what this lookup transformation is actually doing a uh, little bit confused sir can you repeat uh -huh. yeah sure so what happens is uh, the lookup as the name it just suggests lookup we are trying to look up into some other source okay for for each and every record that is coming from source qualifier we are looking up into some other source and picking some required data from the other source and in our case we are trying to look up into department, department table okay so we are looking up into the department table and then we are trying to we are trying to extract the department name from the department table so how we are joining the department table and the source qualifier or the source using the condition called department number is equal to department number 1 in the sense we are trying to match the department number in my source with the department number in the lookup source lookup source in our case is the department table okay so we are making a join between the lookup source and the source qualifier using this condition and then we are extracting the required ports okay oh. good now if you go to the properties see this my lookup source is a relational table right so that is the reason my lookup transformation also supports sql now if i click on generate sql you see this select department dept dot d name and as d name and dept dot location as location and dept number as dept envo from the department table it is writing a sql query similar to the source qualifier transformation okay now we can even uh, overwrite this by adding conditions like where class or group by class or order by class so we can write the we can modify this default sql that is written by the lookup transformation okay so the process of modifying this default sql which is written by the lookup transformation is called as a lookup override okay again uh, since uh, this is generating the default sql only because my source is a relational table in case if i am trying to do a lookup on a flat file the data present on a flat file then all these properties will be disabled again the lookup override will be disabled the filter source filter will be disabled okay there is a lot to discuss about this uh, lookup transformation so 
uh, what I will suggest is uh, try to go through the today's uh, recording, uh, understand till what uh, till this point, like what this lookup transformation is doing, and then we will try to go more deeper into the lookup transformation. Okay. okay. Because I also <laughs> want to uh, tell you like uh, this this property lookup policy on multiple match. So for example, uh, what what this lookup transformation does is it will read the record from the source. It will read the record from the source, and it will try to compare it with the lookup source table. Lookup source table is department table. It will try to join the create a uh, join. Okay. In case if it finds multiple matches, say for example in the department table, this department number 10 is present twice or thrice more than once, then it means that multiple matches is possible, right? Between the employee table and the department table. Now in that case, which, now if, if, the, if the three records are matched, now which match, which match should be or which record should be returned as the output? For that, we can specify the policy here. Lookup policy on multiple match. You see this by default. It is uh, we set this to use any value. If it finds three matches or more than one match, we set by default it is uh, set to use any value, any one value. But the other possible values are use the first value, means that use the first matched value, or use the last matched value use any value or return an error or report error. Okay. You understood this, right? You, did you understand this? Look up policy on multiple match? Uh, no, I, actually I got an idea but I still want to go over it because I, I didn't get it. Okay. Uh, for example, I missed it. Yeah, I'll do one thing, I'll explain it here. So, this is my source. So this is my source and this data is coming from source qualifier sq underscore emp okay if you see this in the, this is my etl mapping in the etl mapping in the source qualifier from the source qualifier sq underscore emp this data is coming okay and i have a lookup transformation here which is trying to look up on department table. Okay. Okay, fine. So uh, observe this property. Look up catching enabled. Okay. I have checked this. Or uh, by default, this option is checked. Okay. You see this uh, property? Catch look up values during the session. The moment this property is enabled, the lookup transformation will select or you know retrieve or read the data that is present in the department table and stores it into the catch file. Okay, you got this right. Lookup catching enabled. It means that the lookup transformation will read the table, department table and selects or reads all the data present in the department table and stores it into lookup catch memory. Means that in the lookup catch memory, catch memory, I have this data. Okay? Till this point clear? Yeah. Good. 
So from the source qualifier SQL score EMP, this data is coming for me. And the lookup transformation looked up into department table. It read the records and stored it into the lookup cache memory. Okay. So the next step is the lookup transformation will read record, record by record from the SQL underscore EMP. First, it will read the first record from the source qualifier underscore EMP. First record. Since we pass in the, uh, if you look at the lookup transformation, we passed only the department number to the lookup transformation. Right? So, yeah. the lookup transformation will read the department number from the first record and it will try to join that record that department number with the data present in the lookup cache lookup cache okay so how it joins uh, the department number this 20 with which value it will join that property we defined in the in the conditions tab we said join the department number in the lookup table with the department number so it will read the department number from the source qualifier and it will join it with the department number in the catch memory okay. and then once if it finds the match it will return it will return the department name it will return only the department name because we connected only we forwarded only the department number port from the lookup transformation to the next transformation if in case we forward this location also say for example we connect the location port to the next uh, transformation then it will return both the department name and the location information okay means first it will read the department number from the source qualifier it will try to join that department number with the department data present in the cache memory once if it finds the match matched value then it will return the department name to the next transformation okay so now you understand how this lookup transformation works yeah it's kind of similar to join join exactly it's similar to join but uh, the thing is the lookup transformation has a property like it can not only do a, a lookup on a department uh, relational table but also a flat file that's fine so, so okay. you can to connect with two different sources yeah. like yeah, two different sources. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, since you understood how this lookup transformation works, now let me tell you what this lookup policy on multiple match does. Say, for example, in my department table, I have multiple entries for department number 20. For department 20, the first uh, department name it is showing as research, but here I'll say finance. It's a finance and some some location X Y Z doesn't matter. And I have one more uh, match 20 and production department and some location A B C. Now say for example this is how my department the data in my department table the moment the lookup transformation reads the data department number from the source and tries to find a match in the department table there are multiple records here for the same department number there are multiple records so out of this multiple matches which match needs to be picked up that that is this property lookup policy on multiple match so we should define some policy 
how this multi, how uh, how this how the match should happen and which value needs to be returned okay so the possible values are use first value when i say use first value the moment the lookup transformation matches this department number 20 with the department table it will pick the first matched value okay it will pick the first matched value and as a department name it will return research <coughs> okay if i select use last value if i say if i set this property to uh, use last value then out of these matches it will select the last matched entry and it will return production as the department name okay if i say use any value use any value then also it will return only the first matched value okay or in fact it can uh, you know match any value also it can uh, return finance or it can return production any value it can return okay i also have one more property called report error okay report error if any of if if the if the match if multiple matches are found between your source qualifier and your and your department table then generate an error and provide it to the session task or the integration service okay so that is this property lookup policy on lookup policy on multiple match there are four possible uh, policies or po possible values use any value use first value use last value use uh, return or report error okay now so you understood right uh, what are these four properties does if i said uh, use any value it will give any value and uh, what the first value last value and report error gives you understand right yes sir good now till version 8.6 informatica power center 8.6 only these four values or four policies are available for this lookup policy and multiple match property okay if you observe these four properties i'll the lookup transformation will take one record as input it will try to match it with the uh, lookup source and will return only one record as output correct and even if i set use any value or first value or last value or report error it is going to return only one record means that for one input it is retaining only one output correct yes. that is the reason in 8.6 version in 8.6 version since my lookup transformation takes only one record as input and returns only one matched value as output at any point of time my lookup transformation in 8.6 version is a passive transformation okay because there is no change between the output number of records and the input number of records whereas if from 9.x version onwards in 9.x version along with these four values along with these four values they have also introduced a fifth option called return all matched records return all matched records this is a fifth property or fifth policy that is newly introduced in 9.x version so because of this particular property my lookup transformation behaves in a different way means that 
it will select the uh, department number 20 from the source qualifier transformation. It will match with the department table. It will return all the matched records from the department table. If I select the fifth option, return all matched records. In a sense, it returns me three records for one input, for one input record. Correct? So that is the reason from 9.x version onwards, the lookup transformation becomes active transformation because it ha it gained uh, the, the lookup transformation gained the property or gained the it gained it is capable to change the records between your output and the input because of this fifth property called return all matched records. Okay. Hope you got some idea on this lookup transformation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll just we'll stop at this point because you can go back and listen to the recording and uh, gain more knowledge on this lookup transformation. Okay. In the next session, we will see. I said the lookup is uh, storing the data in a cache memory, right? So in our next session we will see what are the different types of lookup caches available and what is the difference between one cache with the other cache. Okay. Can so I ask you? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, is there any, any way you can, uh, you can give me 9.1 too? Uh, 9.1 version, uh, Actually, I downloaded uh, the software, but uh, not sure uh, due to some reason it is not working. I tried to install it in my system, uh, but due to some okay. reason, uh, you know, it is almost giving me some errors. Okay, uh, what we can do is, uh, you know, as a last session, uh, what is what the thing is? I have this nine point version in my uh, uh, office laptop. Okay, uh -huh. in my project, actually, I am working on the nine point one version. Okay. So what we'll do is, uh, once we finish all our course contents, as a last step, mm -hmm. we'll see some of the differences between 8.6 version that I'm currently working on with the 9 version. Okay. Okay. Because, so I'll, uh, I'll make, uh -huh. I tried to download from Oracle website, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, downloaded from I'm there itself, but uh, uh, due to some reason it is giving me errors. Yeah, same thing, same. Yeah. Yeah, even the 8.6 version also, I tried to download it from uh, Oracle site, but that was not working due to some reason. So that's yeah. why what I did is uh, I had one uh, 8.6 version, older version, uh, in my which I have purchased actually. Yeah. Okay, so I took that software, but the license mm -hmm. key I picked from the Oracle site. Uh -huh. I clubbed them both and gave that software to you people. Oh, nice. Yeah, because the one uh, I have purchased actually, uh, that license has got expired almost one year back. Oh, okay. So that's why I couldn't give that uh, license to your people. So I picked the license key from the Oracle site. I clubbed it with the software that I had and uh, that, that software I gave it to you people for download. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so no worries. We'll do that. Uh, yeah, as a last uh, session, maybe we can have one session completely and, uh, you know, will show you all the differences by showing the 9.1 version. Okay. Okay. The way we work between the 8.6 and the 9.6, there is no difference at all. It yeah, is it's, same, huh? it, it, it's exactly the same. Only a multiple, uh, very, very minute uh, changes. Like this, in the lookup, there is a new property. And in 9 version, there are a couple of uh, new transformations and some uh, fixes has been, uh, bug fixes has been given in 9 version. So apart from that, there is nothing much uh, to learn in that. Okay? No. Good. So you will set it to use any value, uh, apply. Okay. Fine. So uh, in the next session, we'll learn uh, what are the different types of catches that is available under lookup and the differences between each of those catches. And also we'll see what happens if we do a lookup on a relational table and what happens if I do lookup on a flat file. Also, we'll try to 
uh, execute this mapping in the next session. So today we finished like source qualifier transformation. Yeah, and we finished the uh, source qualifier and uh, some part of lookup transformation. Okay, so the joiner okay. transformation. Yeah, joiner transformation. We'll see it in the next session. Because once you understand the difference between your source qualifier, once you understand uh, thoroughly lookup source qualifier and your lookup transformation, then you can you know appreciate what is the necessity for of a joiner transformation. Okay, but you know uh, we didn't receive the uh, uh, recording session until two more. So uh, can you able? <laughs> uh, actually, you know, yesterday night also I called that person. I don't know what that guy is doing. You know, I just received like I just received yesterday's session. So how can I able to concentrate before start this session? You know. Uh, that's true. That's true. The problem is because of this uh, uh, time differences. Now, now I finished this session, right? It's almost eleven o'clock here. Yeah. The yeah. admin team might be at home. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, they're supposed to when they come to the job, so they're supposed yeah. to send as soon as possible. So can you able to email them? So yeah, like if definitely. you reach in the yeah if you reach in the morning so can you able to forward to this person yeah. as soon as possible you know yeah so okay now uh, now also I'll once again give a call to him and uh, I'll ask him to forward it okay yeah because I just received like few minutes ago so yesterday's session I still waiting oh, okay. yes right as well as still in this morning but I cannot able yeah. to make it yeah okay yeah. The dual thing you have this admin team mail ID right. Just write yeah, them, I'm going mail to, to them. Yeah, I'm going to email them right away, right now. Exactly. So, yeah, do that. Uh, just escalate this uh, issue to them, because uh, okay. if it is in my hands, immediately after this session, I will have, I would have forwarded to you people. But uh, yeah. unfortunately, it is not with me. Okay, no problem. I'm going to email them right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please write to them. Okay, okay good. So in the next session, will uh, next session will be on uh, Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, the so Lord Buddha. Uh, it's a Saturday, right? You want to have a session tomorrow? Yeah, if it's good, you know, because uh, we already lose last week three days, you know, so can we be able to make uh -huh. it in the time? Uh, Saturday, <laughs> uh, it would be Saturday evening for me, so I have other plans to do. Uh, we'll do so, nothing uh, from Monday. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, uh, we'll extend the half an hour more. Like and you can able to do in the morning section another timing like our evening and your morning time in the Saturday. Can you able to do that? Saturday morning means uh, your morning. Tomorrow and morning, our... right? Yeah. Uh, so it would be just twelve hours uh, difference. Yeah, that's the twelve hours. So but today difference. evening, it would be like uh, today evening for you people. Yeah, yeah, today evening. So will you be able to uh, understand these recordings and? Uh, uh, come up with a uh, good knowledge on lookup transformation because uh, understanding if, if we gonna the, receive uh, then uh -huh. yeah if so we gonna receive then yeah 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 okay I got that uh, why I'm telling is uh, understanding and current session is very important for uh, the next session oh okay Virendra yeah lookup transformation is the main thing in Informatica Exactly. Okay. okay. So we could to wait until Monday, then, you know, as soon as we need things are done. Uh, yeah, exactly. No problem. Lookup transformation no problem. is like a ocean. Okay. Uh -huh. If the interviewer tries, they can play with you for all the one and a half hour or two hours of interview session only on lookup transformation. Oh, uh, okay. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so no problem. We could to wait, you know, until yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah. So listen to today's session, get some uh, good understanding on it. And then we'll uh, go with the further sessions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we'll meet on uh, Monday, same time, Monday. eleven o'clock, uh, eleven a.m. EST your time. Yeah. Okay. No okay. Good. Yeah. Fine then. So any other questions? Uh, no. Right now we don't have any questions because we need to okay. 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 questions. Fine. Okay. Uh, have a good and uh, nice weekend. Uh, yeah, have a good night and nice weekend. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. All right, see you.